Hello, my name is Jeff Hajik, and I am the founder of Valaction Continuous Improvement. The video you're about to watch comes from Valaction's Fundamentals of A3 Thinking DVD and is available for purchase at www.valaction.com. This DVD is part of the A3 module of our Lean Training System. This collection of material takes an a la carte approach to continuous improvement education. Whether you're trying to learn more yourself or teach a team, you'll find just the components you need. Now, enjoy the video, and thanks for watching. So let's talk a little about what an A3 report is. If you are familiar with my training, you'll know that I like to present things with analogies. I find that people are often familiar with lean principles and tools, even if they don't realize it. When they see that they already understand many of the underlying concepts, it's much easier for them to learn. In this case, let's look at architecture. An A3 report in problem solving is analogous to a blueprint in architecture. Think about what a blueprint really is. It is a representation of a solution to a problem that a customer has. The customer has a set of requirements for the eventual building. A blueprint is a distillation of all the work that went into coming up with a way to meet those needs. There's a lot of background effort that goes into the blueprint. You need a survey of the land to make sure the building will fit. You need to do load calculations to make sure the building is sound. You have to make sure it meets zoning regulations. A builder can't just draw up a blueprint on the fly. And of course, the blueprint is not the end of the project. The builder still has to organize the contractors to actually put up the walls, do the wiring, and do all the other work that needs to get done. And even after the building is done, the blueprint still has value. It becomes a tool to check that the structure was built correctly. One more thing to consider. A blueprint is not going to be perfect the first time. Customers will undoubtedly see something the architect drew that they will want changed. Or seeing the blueprint will trigger a thought about another need that the customer had not previously considered. The development of a blueprint is a process, not an event. Likewise, an A3 is a distillation of all the work that goes into solving a problem. It is often referred to as a storyboard and follows a general flow between the sections. The A3 generally matches the PDCA cycle. The left side will be the plan step. This template includes sections for the background, current conditions, goal setting, and root cause analysis. On the right side, you'll often see a countermeasure section where you actually implement the changes you settled on in the plan phase. You then confirm the effects of your changes. And finally, do follow up. This section is intended to both spread improvements throughout the organization and to specifically identify additional opportunities that go beyond the original goals of the project. In the process of turning over a lot of rocks while doing the A3, you have a good chance of uncovering another improvement idea. The follow-up section prevents that potential gain from falling through the cracks. Let's look at the plan side in more detail. The first thing you might notice is that it covers half the page. That, in and of itself, should demonstrate how important proper planning is. Again, I recommend you spend at least half of your time planning, even more when the problem is complicated. This may seem in contrast to the Kaizen concept of making quick, on-the-spot improvements. The short answer is that you won't use an A3 in every situation. You should still follow the A3 thinking process, PDCA, to come up with an answer though. With practice, you'll be able to decide when to just make a quick change and when to spend a lot of time planning. Moving a garbage can closer to where it is needed or improving the 5S in your work area are both unlikely to need significant planning time. As you get more accustomed to continuous improvement, you'll find that the higher the risk or the more people that are affected, the more intensive planning should be. The top section of the A3 is the background. It is simply an overview of what the problem is. It should address the impact of the problem and link to corporate goals if possible. The next section is the current condition. It provides more detail about the current state of the process or system and puts a little more light on what the problem really is. Of course, you can't solve a problem without clear goals. And as I mentioned earlier, you need to do a good root cause analysis to fully understand the problem so you don't end up treating symptoms. I want to step back from the template in this example for just a moment. One thing that is hard for people to understand is that there really is no set format for an A3 report, other than the A3 size paper it's on. It should, however, be organized as a storyboard and must follow the PDCA cycle. 
In a company that is regularly using A3 reports, you will see many different section headings and the size of the boxes will vary. Well, I offer a downloadable version of the template from this presentation on my website at www.valaction.com. Keep in mind that it is just a starting point. Adjust it as needed. The right-hand side of the A3 is used once you start putting your solution in place. It starts with a countermeasures section. This is where you manage the project and track each of the chosen countermeasures as they are tried out and implemented. But not all countermeasures are quick and easy to implement, so they may have many steps to them that won't fit on the A3 document. In that situation, you would just list the top-level task and its status. You'd use a separate action plan to keep all the small steps on track. In fact, the same is true for all the sections. The A3 is a summary of all the work that went into it. Consider the blueprint example again. There is a lot of math for load calculations and budget and research on selecting the best materials and a lot of other work that goes on that doesn't appear on the blueprint. Similarly, for your A3, a lot of work happens behind the scenes. For example, your root cause analysis may require an extensive data collection plan and multiple pivot tables. All you would see on the A3 is a snapshot that summarizes all that work. A final point about the countermeasure section. Many will have their own PDCA cycle as you test how to implement them. You will be unlikely to get all of them right the first time. Eventually, though, you will complete the countermeasures and move on to confirming that the problem was indeed solved. Again, I want to stress that being able to properly predict the results is important. If you didn't get what you expected, but still liked the results, you are relying on luck for improvement. That's not a good long-term plan. The problem-solving process is as important as the results. The last section is the follow-up. In the A3 report, the PDCA cycle works on a few layers. As you're working on the problem, you'll use the PDCA cycle to dial in each of the countermeasures. But part of the strength of the A3 process is that you will also check and act on the whole plan. There are two main reasons for this. The first is to systematically spread knowledge. Every A3 author should consider who else shares similar problems and make sure that the knowledge is passed along. A common shortcoming of many companies is that they have pockets of excellence but are not adept at bringing all parts of the company up to the same level. The second reason is to choose which of the uncovered opportunities you might want to act on. As you dive into problems, you'll identify deeper issues faster than you can resolve them. The follow-up section helps you manage your resources. The video you just watched came from the Fundamentals of A3 Thinking DVD from our Lean Training System. You can purchase it at the link on the screen. You can also register for free at www.valaction.com to download an A3 template as well as a load of other great user-only content. Again, thanks for watching and best wishes on your Lean journey.